Hello. In part 3, we computed the partial derivatives of a vector valued function r with respect to s and t, okay, which we have here. In this video, we now need to compute the cross product, okay? So let's draw our trustworthy table for our cross product. So Okay, partial derivative of s crossed with partial derivative of t. And this is going to equal a big table. Okay, so we have our i component, we have our j components, and we have our k components. Okay, you should be pretty familiar with this method already. So, the i component of our... Uh, partial derivative with respect to s, that's simply this term here. So we get minus a sine of t sine of s. Okay? Then we have our j component, which is another minus. Minus a cosine of t sine of s. And then we have our k component. We're running out a bit of room here. But um, our k component is simply a cosine of s, like so. Alright, now we look at our partial derivative with respect to t. So the i component with respect to t is simply b plus a cosine of s multiplied by the cosine of t. Okay, then for our j component, we simply have minus b plus a cosine of s times the sine of t. And then for our k component, or z component, we just have zero. Okay. So how about I put that in a uh, more clear format. There we go, just separate them like so. Alright, so our i, j and k components. So using the table we can now compute the cross product. So cover up the i column we do that multiplied by that minus that multiplied by that. Okay, so this is going to give us, let's put our i out in front first of all, we have, we have a cosine of s multiplied by b plus a cosine of s multiplied by the sine of t. Okay, so we do that times that, which is just naught, and then we do that times that, which gives us this. Okay, then we add our j components. Okay, which gives us, let's see, it gives us b plus a cosine of s. Let me multiply that by the cosine of t. Let me multiply that by the a cosine of s. Okay, so we cover up the j column. We do that times that, which again, of course, is naught. And then we do that times that, which gives us b plus a cosine of s multiplied by the cosine of t. Uh, let me multiply that by a cosine of s. Okay. And then we go on to our k components. So as you can see, we have no zero now. We have to do that times that minus that times that. Okay. And I almost forgot, but that's supposed to be minus there. Okay, not a plus. Minus your j component. Oh, I'm glad I remembered that. So finally, we have our k component. So we add k, our unit vector, in the z direction, 
and we're going to multiply this by that times that minus that times that. So what does this give us? It's going to give us a sine of t, first of all, times the sine of s, okay? And we multiply that by b plus a cosine of s, okay, which you multiply by the sine of t, okay? And then to that we add, of course, that times that, so we get a cosine of t sine of s multiplied by b plus a cosine of s times the cosine of t. Uh, have I missed any parentheses? Yes, I have. There we go. Okay, so that is the result of our cross product. Okay, cut up the i column, that times that minus that times that. Then we find the j components, cut up the j column, that times that minus that times that. And finally, for a long k component, that times that minus that times that. Okay, and it gives us this. So, in the next video, we will completely simplify this down and then take the magnitude, and we should find a very easy and pleasing answer.